Hi there. Recently I gave a talk on signed PVOB meetup and as I got a nice feedback, I've decided to extract one interesting part into an official Hanami Master episode. It was extremely nice experience for me and I've learned a tremendous amount of stuff about live recordings, which are completely different than recording these episodes. Anyway, before I start, let me just mention that I'm working on an ebook extending this topic deeply. So if you are opt in for more content from me related to Rise and Hanami comparison with code examples and such, you can join to my GitHub sponsors for access to the early versions of the ebook and having an impact what to cover in it. For those who don't know, my name is Seth Vilgosh and I'm a creator of Hanami Master Initiative and Ruby developer since 2013. As a developer, I work mostly for Uzel, who kindly agreed to sponsor this talk, and I highly appreciate that. I work with Uzel for almost eight years as a Ruby developer, and they are just amazing people working on great projects that I can highly recommend as a place to work with, if you don't like changing projects every day, as they only practice long-term collaborations. You can find more about me under those links, but you probably are more interested in my work than myself, so let's dive straight into the topic. In this episode, I will talk about mapping Hanami to Rails, and especially I will focus on different building blocks each of those frameworks has to offer. So it will be easier to grasp Hanami concepts for people with rich Rails experience, and another way around. When I've been starting with Hanami, I was really confused at least several times, mostly because of different assumptions Hanami has over rights. After several years of development with rights only, to quickly start with Hanami, I needed to map certain parts of rights applications to Hanami just to understand it better and learn faster. I hope you will find it useful. Enjoy! So let's talk about abstractions in Hanami and Rails. I name abstractions all kind of building blocks you'll need to build your application. If you have a big experience in Rails, you may be surprised that Hanami encourages you to have way more abstractions from day one of your development. This leads to having fewer but bigger files in Rails and more but smaller files in Hanami. Just switching from one framework to another requires a bit of mindset change and a development workflow to be adjusted. I hope this episode will help you with it. In Rails, you can list all the key abstractions very easily as they are pretty well defined and there are not too many of them. So you have roots, controllers extendable by concerns, then models that are also extendable by concerns, views that are basically templates, milers, and global helpers. In Hanami, you will be encouraged to have more abstractions in your system depending on your domain and application structure. By default, Hanami introduces way more building blocks, and some of them you may easily understand if you come from Rails world, but others you need to just check as they have no direct mapping to Rails. Quick notice, if you have used dry RB libraries in your Rails projects, you will have a much easier job. And if you used ROM RB as your persistence layer, you are pretty much set up already because Hanami leverages both of those gem families to deliver a complete toolset for building full featured scalable web applications in Ruby. So in Hanami, we have roads and actions instead of controllers. Then we have contracts as a validation engine. Models are split into several parts using ROM architecture, which includes repositories, relations, and entities. And the view part is split into three pieces using dry view. That includes views, templates, and parts. Aside of that, we also have the mailers and the view helpers. However, helpers are nowhere near being globally accessible and you get full control of what you include in what place. Let's then take a closer look into differences and try to map those components to each other. Controllers and actions are pretty easy to understand. 
as they really do play the same role in both frameworks. In Rails, each controller has multiple actions defined as methods. In Hanami, from other hand, you don't have controllers because each action is self-contained and has its own class and file. In Rails controllers, the action renders the template directly, while in Hanami it just calls the proper view. This moves our attention to the view rendering. In Hanami Master episode number 2, I already dug into the view rendering and have shown how to render articles for a blog. Feel free to check it out if you are interested in implementation details. In Rails, you only have templates that are named views. They are supposed to only be used to present the injected data in an HTML file, but because there is no clear place to put view logic, we often end up with logic being placed in views or controllers. There is no presentation pattern built in, so it also tends to be placed in templates directly or in global helpers. Then template structures the HTML document to show the data in the browser as intended and use helpers whenever the view related logic is used in several places. Hanami team just said it's too much for a single object and they had split the templates into three parts. In Hanami, you will then have a view object that is a Ruby file which contains the view-related logic, uses the helpers when needed, and renders the proper template with only exposed methods available. You have templates as in Rise, but with the difference that they are much more simplified. There is no access to any global method and the template can only use methods that were exposed by a view. Then finally, presentation logic has been extracted to parts, so it's clear where to put presentation-related stuff. This is more code to be written from the very first endpoint, but it scales way better, and this solution can be used in Rise too if you want it. Then let's go to the models. In Rise, similar to views, when it comes to models, they tend to have multiple responsibilities. And because of that, it's very easy to blow them up with content. In a standard Rails application, you will find your models being responsible for validating data, the database communication, the scopes definition, and also will contain the business logic. In Hanami, each of those responsibilities is again extracted away to completely separate objects. This way, we get the contract to validate the data, repositories delivering an interface to communicate with a database and the relations where we define our queries. Please notice that there is no place for business logic in any of those objects. Hanami encourages you to come with your own abstractions for modeling your business domain and it doesn't force you to change your business implementation to match your database structure. It seems like a much more scalable approach you can easily replace or reuse those components, but again, you will get more code to be written and more files to manage. I see it as a reasonable trade-off, but let me know how do you see it in the comments. Rise is designed to write medium-sized monolithic applications and its default file structure just does not scale well. At some point, you will need to extend it, but there is no clear way how. So we enter similar issues React applications have, where every project has different structure and patterns applied. And before you will start yelling at me, I'm fully aware of existence of GitHub, Twitter, Shopify, and different other Rails giants. I'm not saying it's not possible to scale Rails applications. Of course it is. Rails by default just generates some problems with scaling that are sometimes tricky to be avoided but by default are sold in Hanami. To split Rails into several pieces, the only official way is to extract some code into Rails engine. While this is fine, from my experience, extracting anything existing in the mine application into an engine is never an easy task. Hanami also evangelizes the monolith first approach, and it also comes with everything needed for a complete web application by default. However, it is designed in the mindset of scaling well from the start. In Hanami, you will organize your app around slices since day one. 
you may think about them as Rails engines, but not as an option when the app extends, but enabled immediately and used by default. Whenever then comes a need to extract a part of the application into a separate service, it's way easier as you already have encapsulated slices that can be easily removed from the main repository and put somewhere else. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this episode. I would like to especially thank Yuzeo and Vitali Pokrityuk for supporting my channel and the Hanami Mastery Initiative. I appreciate that as without your financial support, this project could not exist. Thanks to all of you for being a part of the great Ruby community and for all the positive reactions you give. You are awesome. You can also see two of my previous videos here. And if you have any suggestions of amazing Ruby gems you would like me to cover or ideas on how to improve, please mention them in the comments. Have a nice day and see you in the next Hanami Mastery episode.